<laughs> What's up, everybody? Um, I'm to hear more. I'm Patrick Cloud. And this is another episode of Damn Internet. You scary. Okay. Got a very special guest on right now. You know what I'm saying? You might remember her from uh, such shows as Squadcast, you know, The Drop, uh, Shoulders of Atlanta. Ladies and gentlemen, we got the one and only <laughs> Scoopy Doo. Meg Scoop in the building. Ba, 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 ba. That was uh, Shoulders of Atlanta season one and two. You're right, you're right, my bad. It, it was only two seasons, but go ahead. <laughs> I wish we could call you Scoop, but that's a that's a gang out here. Is yeah. it? Yeah. And it's, it's too close to AKA too. Oh, We're yeah. not too close. They say ski. They just yeah. I'm it's just, pretty close. I'll just leave it alone. <laughs> How's Atlanta, Megan Scoop? It's Atlanta ing at per usual. Um, you know, it's got fair share of crime, fair share of, you know, white people in the outskirts. Uh ain't no white people in Atlanta? There are, but I feel like in certain parts, it's like, what? There's white people here. Like, you know, certain parts where you go. But then where I live, it's like, oh, what? There's black people here. So it's a little, it's a little weird because it's like outside of Atlanta. And the fact that I feel like that, it's different. What? You haven't been to Tyler Perry's studio yet? Yeah, I've been there. Actually, I was, um, when it first really? opened, I had to, I interviewed him there. Oh, nice. And then they gave us like all the press. They gave us a tour. Um, mm. Very nice. And it was just like... Wow, like, bro, he got a whole diner that he, t it was from like some South Georgia area. It was a for real diner. He literally had it dug up and shipped. Like on a train or like by, like, I don't know how they got it to his studio. I don't know if it was by train, by like truck or what, mm -hmm. but they literally picked this whole diner up. It looks like every diner you've ever seen on a movie set or on a TV show. <laughs> and they literally dropped it. And this is for to eat or to shoot at? No, to shoot at. So he has like he has a bunch of like because it's a bit. It used to be um an army base, so it's right. a big right. open property. So he's got a diner. He's got like you see this um, airplane. It's like I don't know if it's like half an airplane or something. So he can shoot airplane scenes inside of an airplane. He's got like this um yeah. the White House. It is for real. Looks like the White House on the outside. Mm -hmm. It looks to scale to be honest. And then he's got a, like a whole neighborhood. I mean, like the back there, the houses are not there, but like the fronts of the houses are mm -hmm. legit look like houses. So he's mm -hmm. got like a street, he's got um, a bank, he's got maybe like a football field or baseball field or something like that. It, it just is, it's Damn. just a bunch of sets. And then he has like, you know, like 12 sound stages or something like that. Yeah. No, he got more than that. He has the most. He has more than I all the like twelve survive. sound stages. Or, yeah. I don't know. It's it's a lot. Well, it's, it's the most I think in the Southeast. Yeah. <laughs> But like the amount of square footage, because we're in Georgia, is way more square footage than any, I think any studio in LA. I believe that because I mean W WB as big as it is, it's on what Lancashire. Mm. <laughs> like it right, can't right, it right, can't right. even really spread out that much. So yeah. that's all. That's really cool. I always wanted to see it. It's funny how you can predict what type of movies people will shoot. Cause like until you like diners being hella movies, <laughs> right? Right. You don't even really think about it like that. Diners. Uh, what else did you say? Football fields. Like you can kind of predict what people will book based on just shit that that's out there. Like planes. I mean, like, and that's just the stuff that's like individual on the outside. But I'm sure, like he has a jail. He's got, but it's like inside of one building, a jail, a court house, like the bank. I don't know what else is in the bank building, but there's like mm -hmm. other stuff, other mm -hmm. sets. All, all the sure stuff that used to be in YouTube studios. Yeah. R.I.P. Right. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. I love crazy. it. I'm I want to go. Movie. Yeah, me too. I want to take a tour or something. They do, they do tours like Universal? I don't think they started yet. They, I mean, I think they had the... I think they planned on it and then the pandemic hit. And so I think now there's... They haven't started it yet. But I think the, the goal is to still do it. Okay. I, like, big, I, like, big I, I, I definitely want to go check it out because I, I showed it roll up there a few like a couple of months ago with somebody that was in town <laughs> and I rolled up to the gate they was like nah turn on back <laughs> <laughs> I said turn on back <laughs> trying to take a picture they was like not today because sometimes they'll let you just like pull up to the front 
um, before the gate. It says Tyler Perry Studios, so they'll, they'll let people like get out and take pictures. But that day, mm-hmm. I don't know what was going on. They was like, uh-uh, sorry. I was like, Damn. dang, okay. <laughs> I can't imagine how much money he must have to have the biggest studio in the and, industry. Oh, and to buy, you know, try to buy BT, you know. It's just, it's just whatever. It seems like he just has enough money to do whatever the hell he wants right now. But that's look, that's hard work paying off. All them years, did nobody want to um, bankroll him or help him out? He said, "All right, I'll just do it myself." Man, listen, owns the one of the biggest, the biggest studio, square footage wise and lot wise. Now owns BET. Owns well, I don't think he owns company. it yet. I think that's like they're it's trying the process. to. Yeah, because I think they're trying I to. Not, I think they're not trying to charge him like something ridiculous because they know how like now that everybody wants BET. Because at first I don't think they thought many people was gonna buy it, but now everybody want to buy it. They're like, oh, three billion dollars. I don't. Yeah, I'm glad that I'm glad that he got it more than Diddy. I think. Oh gosh, we, Diddy ain't gonna get. He better not get that. Okay. Yeah. And I, and, and I say that like I'm glad revolt. that stay over there, stay at revolt. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just gonna say, just just seeing what he did with revolt, I just was like, I don't see, I don't see revolt in a lot of places. I don't see it like making the strides that it potentially uh, that had the potential to be. I feel like, and I just don't know if Diddy has the bandwidth to do BT right. I feel like Tyler can do it right. If he, t- right. Tyler can put one of his movies on every day for three years, and he'll never repeat a movie. <laughs> I mean, you know, and plus uh, half that stuff on BT Plus is his anyway. So it's like he that's had the true. best. That's future. hella true. He just I might mean, he, he, he basically system. creatively flushed out that and own BET Plus and own. Remember, he was doing all the programming for Oprah. Yeah. So he might as well go ahead and buy it. It's already his anyway. So <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Man. Usually, when people say like, "Man, I'll just do it myself," they don't actually end up beating the big corporations. They'll do they'll do like enough for them to like you know get rich, but they don't ever go out and beat Sony. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> crazy. I don't even know he if really he set out to do that. I think he was just like he just got so good at working like at this level that he just kept doing it and that's what made him all this money because think about it like he single-handedly would back in the day it's different now but he would write all the shows like every single episode before he he didn't even really have writers like that Mm -hmm. he would write the shows he would direct them he would act in them he did the all the plays like that because he just didn't have the money to hire people so it was like oh i gotta do it and then he kept doing it once he got like once he started making legit money, he's just kept, he didn't know how to not operate like that. Right. It, I think mm-hmm. it took him some years before people were like, "Bro, like, you know how you, you trying to scale? You doing all of this for multiple shows? Like, you that is not sustainable." And he mm-hmm. finally started getting you know producers and all type of help. But mm-hmm. that's crazy. But that's how you make money. You got to do it yourself. Yeah. It's cool to see him as the new rich black guy. You know how like growing up there was always like a rich black guy. Like, man. Mm-hmm. Diddy will buy it, or you know, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! I forgot to ask y'all. How y'all feeling about uh Spiel? I'm trying to get on it. Won't nobody give me a code? I didn't beg. Oh, you want a code? I send you a code right now, What's man. That? You didn't send me a code. Why you ain't send me a code? I'm over here begging on Twitter. Somebody just stole the code that the girl sent me because she ain't DM it to me. I got you, man. What is this? It's supposed real. to be the rival. It's only, for, for it's only for us real blacks, Pat. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> I'm a real black. <laughs> you aren't. You're a Japanese high school girl. You're a Japanese high school girl. Look at your background. Hey, this is cool trinkets and such. <laughs> <laughs> yes, cool exactly trinket. what a Japanese high school girl would say. Well, there, is, there is Hello Kitty over there, but that's the only <laughs> thing. <laughs> you feel the beat. <laughs> All right, boom! I just said it to you, Pat. You don't have one yet. What? What is it? I didn't hear what the what it was called. It's it's basically like the new Twitter. Well, I'm it's sorry. black Twitter, but it's, it's, it's black black Twitter. black Twitter personified. What? Yeah, mm-hmm. we leaving now Twitter. Black Twitter got its own app. Yeah, called after the, after he put the limitations on us, like if you don't have a verified account, you only got what? What do you say? Sixty tweets or, or you can only if you're like, new verified it was like 30 or 60 it was something ridiculous you something like, bro, he running that month, bro he running that shit like he playing truth or dare and he keeps taking all dares <laughs> Every okay. is a dare. i bet you wouldn't put wait is this limitations on what you can write or what you can actually read what you can view my nigga <laughs> that's crazy that's okay. crazy so here's the thing elon what's, Musk what's the purpose is, of that 
Elon Musk is a genius in a way of putting people in places where you can make a lot of money. Tesla, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, is still the best bang for your buck when it comes to electric cars. They have the best range, the best propulsion, uh, quality, eh. But when it comes to it, they've been doing it the longest, right? Everything else, he's a cornball. And it don't matter how much money you got, you can't outpay corn. Corny is always gonna win. You just a corny motherfucker with money, bro. You corny, and that's that's Elon Musk. You, like, you could have just. I feel like somebody dared him to do something crazy. They were like, "I bet you won't do something crazy." Like buy Twitter, and then he did the shit because he's a cornball with money, and now he don't know what to do with it. So now he's just trying to he's trying to turn everything into a paywall because mm-hmm. the company isn't making the money, the type of revenue that he's used to making. But it's like some shit be a long term investment. You right. came in and making shit change in the first 90 days. It's like, you a goofy. Twitter is so cultural that yeah. it's like corporations, like it's crazy that they don't see this. Uh, nothing kills something that's cultural quicker than corporations. That's why music festivals and, and stuff like South by Southwest and Coachella, they're hot for a long time. And then they're not all of a sudden because corporations are like, oh, is this where everything is? Well, mm-hmm. let's fill it with, you know, all these brands. And then people don't like that. So it's crazy. He doesn't see a difference between Tesla and Twitter because Tesla's a huge money maker. Twitter just needs to be what it's at. <laughs> well, he doesn't yeah, understand like, the whole purpose is like it's social media. You're telling people they cannot be social up to an, a point. He, he doesn't understand culture, regardless of him being born in South Africa, growing up in Toronto, and just being around all the culture. He doesn't understand it. His pale skin reflects it. He can't absorb it, so he doesn't see the value in it. He's a cornball. He just, I just don't think he understands social media, period. Like, that's just not... That's not if if you're looking to make money in that way. That's not it because people just gonna leave. They're gonna be like, oh, well, that's what's okay. the what's the new place called? I'm sending you the I'm sending you an invite code right now. You I'm sending you an invite code, Pat. Since now I'm a part of Spill. Oh Spill. shit! I didn't let you do it, man. But I just sent you one, Pat. So you just fill that shit out. Wait, right it now. ain't the same code you sent me. I ain't put the code in yet. I know. I'm just saying that. No, it ain't the same. I'm code giving him my code too. I ain't gonna be in here. What are you talking? It's different. I got three tickets, nigga. Oh, okay. Do you like it, to hear? Is it cool? I do, but I, I haven't, I haven't uh, spent like yes. uh, a significant amount of time on it. I got on it yesterday, sent off a couple, read through it, and then today they had posted uh, a link with like basically how to spill, what it is, when you spill, when you retweet right. or you know repost something or comment on something. So, and cat, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Why they hate no Android users? I'm sure it's coming. It has to be coming. It's too many of y'all for them to not have that that update. Oh, you can't out. have Android using the Spill app? Damn. They probably mm-hmm. put it out before they had all that stuff because of what Elon's doing right now. They might. Yeah, have and these the, guy, the two guys that uh, that created a, are, are people of color, and they are nice. former employees of Twitter. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, they are. Yeah. One was like he won a bunch of awards. He was like mm-hmm. has to do with something and they the they, they dipped because of what happened at they might have got fired. He could have been they could have been in that round of people that he fired, but they got two point seven five million dollars in investment seed money and then Damn. they came up with spill. And they just so happened yep. that it, it launched or it became widely known that it was launching the day that Elon set those limitations. So it's like oh, perfect. Wow. that was perfect. perfect. And I, I hope I hope I hope it takes off. I hope it takes off, and I hope people transfer from Twitter to here. I hope Twitter still stays there. You know, Twitter can be like the back door, like right. you know, what I'm saying that's, that's the back way into the matrix. You still can go in there <laughs> for what you need every now and then. But I hope Spiel takes over, and I hope Eli realizes he needs to be completely hands off and just be an angel investor in Twitter right. because everything he touches when it comes to social media is a fucking mess. Yeah, it's like what? Ball. Was there something else? With what? With uh, Elon? Did he do anything else in social media? Uh no, it's just like him tweeting. Like even when he's tweeting, oh, yeah. like that. Like anything involved with social media, I just, I just don't want to. I don't want to see his tweets. Yeah, and it's I, only invite. Uh, right now, it's kind of like how Clubhouse was at the beginning. Yeah, remember? I never signed they're, up. They're, I, I would imagine no. they're giving them to, like, 
you know, the, the influencers and stuff like that so we can go in and get our name so nobody goes in and grabs your name on some fuck shit and then oh, they try yeah, to get yeah. you to yeah. you, know, you to pay them or give you your name and shit. So, like, I would imagine that's probably what's happening. Yes. Well, I'm signing up right now. Yeah. yeah. Are there a lot of... And there's, like, a lot of people? Like, the your your timeline's already lit? Um, It's a... Let me see. Let me go to you feel like there's a lot of people. It's um. I got a spill. Yeah, so it tells you how to spill right here. This is one thing right here, and you just basically read it. It's like it's gif or mean for it type of post, right? Mm, okay. And then you kind of caption it with something, and then you can reply to everything. You could requote that and add a comment to the quote, or you could just like repost it and do it. Is there? There's stuff new like that, or is it basically just like Twitter 2.0? Um, the layout is new. The layout is completely new. Um, I got the Patrick Cloud. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ooh, I got mine too. Meg Scoop. Follow me, guys. I got zero. <laughs> same, same. It says, oh, instead of followers, and it's sipping and serving. Mm-hmm. You get it. The tea. The tea. Spill the tea. Oh, it's because Black Twitter always had the tea when it came Wait, to Twitter. Spill. When it came to what they're saying on Black Twitter, so now they spilling this tea Sipping, over serving. So instead of a tweet, it's a, like I'm spilling right now. I'm. I just did a spill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. sassy. <laughs> Not I sassy. Had, I just followed you, man. That's you doing Meg scoop? Yep, I'm on there. This the uh this the creator. Like, I don't know why you got that picture like that. Like you, you know, you be really be out here in these streets. Cut it out. I child. do be out here with these streets. You see my name, but my, it's because my white? name. No, he's like his name's Alfonso. I don't know. I don't know any white Alfonso. Oh, What's y'all names? Just make scoop and to hear more. Yes, sir. Yep. What's going? What is this little thing next to my name? That's a uterus. What is that symbol? You say what? What is that little symbol next to you? See where it says Meg Scoop? Oh yeah. Oh no, what maybe that's that? gonna be like your your uh that's your OG uterus. member or something like that. I'm gonna what do is your? Does yours yeah. have that next to it? Oh no, you know what? That's your astrological sign, I guess. Oh, then I should probably put it in the right birthday, huh? <laughs> You so trash, man. Maybe somewhere close to my birthday. Not necessarily. I don't like to be putting my real birthday out there. Okay. Uh, you so trash. Is that gonna post? Oh, it fixed you birthday. right. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't post your birthday. It just tells. That's you why know, I didn't know what it was because that's not my zodiac sign. So, like, what is this? What is this uterus here? <laughs> like, it looks like fallopian tubes. I guess uh-huh. that's Aries. All right, boom. My first okay. spill. Whoa, what this is crazy from? with a gif. Hold on to your potatoes. <laughs> oh, and when it's posting, it says brewing your tea. I like Ooh. this. This feels oh, black. You know? Okay. Let me. Do you have to put gifts and stuff or no? Um, you don't uh, have to no. know. But I mean, if it's gonna be your first post, give it some razzle. Razzle dazzle. Give it some razzle dazzle. Right. Hey, this is fun. I got a whole new app. Well, so wait, y'all still staying on Twitter though? I mean, I'll stay on there, but like that's not gonna be. I'm, where I'm I go going to do like, my best to like really get popping on. I feel like this is an opportunity to get popping with like Early. TikTok and Vine and all that type of shit. So like, yep. not even from the stand place. I mean, the standpoint of malicious intent but now it's like all right well fuck it if this shit pops off then you know right. i'm gonna hit the ground floor and, and just take off running and right. if that happens to off. keep me off of twitter more than usual then you know it's, it's a win-win so every every platform is an opportunity to grow and expand the fan base and the support group so mm-hmm. i'm on it yeah it's kind of like if you have the chance to get in on youtube or something early mm-hmm or Meg, if we had like the chance to get into like uh, shoulder supports early, like like get stock into 
you know, like shoulder pads and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, braces, suspenders. I, know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why you didn't hook me up and tell me about it, considering you got in for man bras really early on. You could have told me, hey, look out for shoulder bras or something, you know? Well, my partnership with Skims had a very tight NDA, so I couldn't really just you know, tell you about that. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Tight NDA. <laughs> okay. Tight hey. NDA. I couldn't, I couldn't be out here just talking all willy-nilly. Okay. Hey, y'all, do y'all be watching uh, true crime or like murder stories? You know I love murder stories and true crime. Mm-hmm. I think that says a lot about us too when we go to sleep watching that type of stuff. Did y'all see that? Y'all saw that study that said like people who go to sleep, um, yep. to true Huge. crime, major it's, red flag, major red flag, and it's because you dealt with a lot of trauma in your life, so this is just normal to you. The chaos and the craziness yeah. of true crime is just hey, it's normal to my life. I don't think and, that's and fair. after I saw that, I said, oh my gosh, that is so true. Because think about everybody that you know that like loves true crime that will fall asleep to it. Like to, they are the, have the most trauma. The, all all of, all my friends that do that. That's not trauma. true. It's interesting. That's like saying if you like action movies, you're you've been through some tr- like traumatic experience. Like first of all, who has it? Second of all, it's it's entertainment. Like right. that would be weird to be watching boring stuff because you're like I've never been through anything. It's so not this boring. Is- it's what I'm saying is a difference between liking true crime and being like oh I want to fall asleep to it. Like this is comforting to me. Mm. That's what the study was saying. It's well, you know what? And a lot of times in those situations, because I, 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 you don't know the parameters of these studies, bro. Like they just give this information with no background or right. no like supporting evidence. But it's right. like I like the true crime because I like to find out about wild stories that happen. But the full circle effect is that usually they solve the crimes on like uh, forensic files and stuff. They end up solving and figuring it out. There's a, there have been a few that went unsolved, but for the most part. Most of them are solved through DNA and forensic evidence and things of that nature. So it feels like what we watch on TV. You watch an action movie, somebody gets kidnapped, they hire somebody to go find them. This person beats a thousand people's ass and then brings the kid home. It comes full circle, you feel good about it. And so true kind for me is like, oh my God, the world's so crazy. Oh, thank God they found the person that did it. And it provides a little comfort. So Mm-hmm. I don't like you know why I don't like true crime because every single time and, and my husband loves true crime every single time he turns it on I look at it this person died it was somebody they knew this is the person who killed them the end I was like yo I cannot watch this same plot that's a crime. thousand times over <laughs> yeah, that's crime, crime plot, y'all they already know who killed them. That they tell you off the end, and I cannot keep doing this. But, but the thing the about it is, is it's on TV. I can't turn it off, and it makes me so angry. They're all different, though. No, yeah, one died in all of them, and then the person did it. Somebody did it. <laughs> Here's my yeah. recommendation: switch over to hood true crimes. <laughs> that is so much more interesting, and it's so much smarter to watch because ninety percent of, of of true crime is like this farmer in Wyoming killed his wife or just like this random dude in Jackson hole. Mm-hmm. But like you go to the, the, the hood crime stories. I want to know what's happening on Sloss. Bro, I they got know what's that already. It's the first Chirac. 48. The first 48, they be in the hood. The first Is that the main? Memphis. I just be watching it on YouTube. Bro, <laughs> the first 48 be so fucking hood. It like, does. Like, <laughs> God bless the dead. But y'all saw what happened with the lady in the restaurant and her and her son, her son? yeah, come and step in. Yes, they had took the picture of dude and they labeled it, and they said he went in for some. Uh, oh, I saw that. Oh my god, I know what you're about to say. Yeah, he went in for like burgers. He left with his wings. I saw that. Damn. That's how first forty eight like labels their titles too. Like it'd be just like that. You be like what? Wings. And you see the title, they be like, "Oh, yo, they wilder for this." It'd be a double entendre with the title, so that's that was the person or the actual headline. That no, that it somebody posted it and put that. Okay, on the yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> headline. See, I no, can't do this. I can't. First forty-eight is scripted, though, right? The hoodest is the hoodest true crime you will get. What is first forty-eight? Oh, man. but that's but it's scripted though, right? No, oh. it's real crime that has happened. Bro, they be they'll pull up on the scene. 
and the body still there. You see the, the trail of blood going yeah. up to the white sheet. It was like Memphis, Tennessee. A phone <laughs> call is made because a man is lying on the blood on the on the concrete, bleeding for hours. And then they're pulling the phone. Y'all need to get down here. These folks somebody just left me in the middle of the street. Yeah. What? Detective Jackson, what thinking of? a veteran of the police force for 28 years. I know. Uh -oh. Homicide for 10 years. That ain't, the scene. that ain't the one that cuts to the, the, the timer and it'll have the 48 hours. It's like, yeah. 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 That's a that scripted is, series. No, it's not. It's not. Because sometimes also you'll see they have like the, the person's face will be blurred mm -hmm. because I, I guess at the end of it, knowing that because we are we all do production, I think what happens is any of the people that are on it, they have the production company has to get like them to sign a waiver to say, hey, we're covering this crime. You know, we're going to show your face. So I don't the question is, I don't know if they pay these people afterwards, like we're because we're covering this story, we're showing your face, we're going to pay you. Or is it a simple mm -hmm. fact like you got to sign this waiver? For right. us to agree to show your face, because sometimes it's, they'll blur like the the witness, yeah. or they'll blur the person who actually did it because they. Didn't it's weird because they'll do that. Sometimes they'll blur. Sometimes they'll show the face. Sometimes they use fake names to protect the people involved. But That's then kind of, they yeah. started doing this at the end of some of them. It was like if you want to donate to the family, you can you know email this number. I mean email this address and or, or you know donate here or call this number. So it was like damn so wait like it's it's a it's, it's a lot of levels to it and every episode is different as far as like how do I say the word Meg an anonymity an amenity anonymity no oh, first that first one, one I think the first one was right. Okay. Okay. Yeah Terrence I was thinking of 24. Jack Bauer I was like, there's oh. no way he's real. Oh, really? <laughs> Them shots is crispy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> that is a... <laughs> Wait, but 48 Ooh. also does a little beep, beep, beep. The timer, or is that specific? Yeah, it's like when, you, when it starts, as soon as they get there, they're like, and the timer starts. And then throughout the show, come back to the timer. Sometimes they'll show that it's 48 hours is up and they ain't got nowhere. Like. Uh... That is so funny. This whole time we talking about true crime. You over here talking about scripted show. That's that's what I was thinking. No, about but the, the stuff that I watch is real. It's just online by YouTubers that are involved in gangs themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I tell you what I do like though, because um, sometimes like you know, watching a lot of those shows can mess with you a little bit. So mm -hmm. I just want to let you guys know that this show, this episode, is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you ever start watching. Too many of those shows you feeling down or the holidays coming really? around or the seasonal changes starts to get to you, we definitely want to remind you about BetterHelp, okay? BetterHelp is uh, an amazing option when it comes to uh, therapy. You get a chance to really connect with your, your therapist. You get a chance to pick your therapist. Uh, you can connect with a therapist in under 48 hours, and then for any reason you don't really connect with them, you can change your therapist. It's very easy, and it's it's free of charge to you. All right, Whether you're dealing with decisions around your career, relationship, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life. So you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything else. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. Um, when I first started with BetterHelp, to be honest, I didn't buy with the first guy. Uh, and it wasn't no disrespect to him. It's just like we just didn't really click. Um, so I requested a new therapist, got another one in under 48 hours. That person was amazing. They were able to understand what I was trying to say. They helped me sometimes just verbalizing the thoughts that are in my head because you think about those thoughts all day, but then you never say it aloud. Just saying it aloud sometimes helped me talk myself through what I needed to do or what I needed to do differently. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely mm -hmm. online. It's designed to designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. All right. Let them be your therapy. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash DIYS today and get 10% off your first month. That's better help. H E L P dot com slash D I Y S. If you've benefited from therapy, uh, feel free to share your experience, man. Post it on there, the testimonials page, and help someone else find their way back on track. 
My first three therapists was on BetterHelp. Talk about it. It was. What, I had what you on my, now? What, what number? I'm on number four, and she's. I love her. But my first three that I kind of and it's. I, I went. They were good for different periods of life. I had one that was like I, maybe I went to her for like six months. Another one. I, I did, oh, couples counseling on there. I didn't really like mm. her. We was there with her for like three or four. She just didn't vibe with us. And then another one we found on there. I loved her. She was great. So. Do you guys specifically need like a black woman and a black man? Or does that not always matter? I do. I do. I do. Mm-hmm. Just, for, just for relatability, right? Yeah. Yeah, but one of my friends, she's, she is very pro-black. And oddly enough, her therapist is like a, a gay white man. I was like, Wow. And she was like, no, he gets me. I was like, okay. Gay <laughs> white man be acting like, like, like a black, black woman as your therapist. She was like, no, nah, she just, you know, you just go with who, you know, just certain people vibe with you. Just, you just gotta yeah. go with that. And you know, once you talk to them and you, you know, you, you, you will feel if you're comfortable with your therapist or not. Every time I found a therapist in traditional therapy, uh, like going into the therapist and stuff like that, anytime it was a person uh not of color and i would tell them like you know my upbringing y'all know the stories and shit like that like i could see them like i could see their faces like and it's just like uh, i'm not here for this bro like right. you don't get this yeah you don't you're not gonna get it every story i'm gonna tell you is gonna baffle you and i, I admit i've been doing some wild ass shit but it's like right. going into it you seeing that whether you're shocked by the story or you're thinking about how much work is going to be involved with helping me unpack this shit it just wasn't reassuring to see that on your face. So that makes sense. I was just like, <laughs> if that's the person who's helping you, it would be nice if they had uh, at least been in that same ballpark of you know, like it not not just them like, oh, okay, yeah, let me flip to the back of this book. Like, you know, <laughs> 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 it'd be good if you know they had some damn experience. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense though. T uh, T Hudson said. We would watch Crime 360 in high school. Crime 360 was more interesting because they showed the animation of the crime scene and how they would find the murder weapon. I've this never heard of that. absolutely true. Crime 360 was amazing. They don't longer really air it. Oh, and I like how, I like the new thing that, that okay, StreamYard, I see when you, you hit the thing and it pops up like that. I like that. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Crime 360 was fire, right? So, like, they would tell you the murder and pull you to the scene and then they would tell you what happened. And then they would have somebody come in and they would take a scan of the room so they can know exactly where the bullet was fired from, what angle, all that. And then they would do an animation of it. So the person was standing here, and the bullet would come out the gun, and the show would show going through the person's legs. All of a sudden, it would hit when it went through the leg, all that type of stuff. It was fire, but they only did like a couple seasons of it. But Crime 360 was bomb as fuck. I think it's my, wow, I think that was on TV. Like, yeah, well, you go on Hulu. It was on Hulu at one point. I, I have to see if it's still on there. I just, it, I just, I just looked it up, and it says that you can get it on Hulu. You can get it on uh, Prime, and mm-hmm. apparently, apparently, it's on uh, AETV, and I think they have their own streaming too. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. I think that was one of the ones I got a, a, a seven day trial to watch something, yeah. and then I just didn't cancel it. <laughs> I finish my seven day trial. This MGM streaming app. I'm watching the show from. Oh with my MGM. gosh, I'm on that right now. We're uh, we're like almost done with the first season, bro. Oh, first with season. MGM. Let me tell you something. You're oh. gonna be so mad, man, because they don't give you no answers. Oh. No, and it only gets more confusing the more it goes on. You be like, no. what the fuck? What is happening? You start feeling Wrong. really bad. You be like, I don't know what's. I, at first, I had a glimmer of hope. No, I just don't don't tell me that. I'm thinking I'm getting ready to get answers because we getting towards nah, the end. They gonna, of the- man, they gonna lead you on. What's what's you that on MGM, Jackson, baby? What, yeah, it. what is yeah. MGM? I feel like it's new. Is this something else that, that changed over to MGM? MGM no, this Plus. Came out 2022. No, no, no. What's I'm it? saying the app it's MGM urban. Plus. Was it something else before? Uh, I don't know. Oh, it got the dude, the black dude from Walking Dead on it. Yeah. Oh, right. Yes, Harold Perrineau. And he's so good in this role. Oh, he's the he's the lead. He's the lead, bro. Yeah. And he's oh, so yeah. good in this role, bro. I just want to say, why is he always oh, in some alternate universe? Shout out hey, to Harold Pierno. I feel like MGM. all of his shows that he be on is like a, a universe that ain't really there. They say hey. MGM is formerly Epic, man. Or Epics. Epics. Oh. oh, okay. Well, yeah, because Epics seemed kind of like, why would I buy that? Epics <laughs> or FX? Oh, it was FX? 
No, I don't know. Epics. E-P-I-X. Oh, Epics with an X? I've never even had that. I-X. That's what I'm saying. So they had to rebrand because I don't think nobody was buying. I ain't even heard it. Hear that. But MGM Plus does look fire. It's like a lot of stuff on there. I mean, it looks cool. I haven't, I haven't, like, when I'm streaming something, I'm on that trial. I'm just, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here so I don't get fined. I'm knocking all the shit out. Then I'm going ahead and cancel that bad boy. Right, right. Is this like some supernatural type horror shit? Or? Bro. Pat, Something like that, yeah, Pat, yeah. You just got to watch the first episode. Because you can watch the first season for free on Amazon uh-huh. Prime. See, it's I never help. Harold Perrineau was also on 64 episodes of Lost. You remember? This yep. ain't nothing but Lost. I think that's what I meant. Was he in Walking Dead too? Was he? I don't think he was in Walking Dead. Whichever one, I mean, he was like, my else. boy. I'm doing all of this for my else, boy. He, he was in something else, though. What else has he been in, man? I'm looking at all his stuff. He's I, think, been, I think it was oh, he, uh, um The Best Man. The Best Man. That's who he is. All he the Best the, Man he stuff. A, he was a corny friend with a wife that was walking all over him. Yeah. That's he was what in it was. Matrix Reloaded, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think he was in Walking oh, Dead. That's what I was like. When I saw this, I was like, was he, he in was a Driver on uh Matrix Reloaded. See, oh, that's he's right. Yeah, he, he's always in some alternate universe. I told y'all, Harold hey, Perry, right, man, Harold 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 Harold. hey, low key, Pat. <laughs> like, we should legit have a watch party for the first episode of From This oh, is so goddamn good, bro. It, it is, is really wild, amazing. it is fucking wild. He's in Sons of Anarchy, too. I'm down. <laughs> This looks good. cool. I mean, I, I can't hear it, but I'm looking at the trailer right now. It looks like it's shot amazingly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's really shot really well, it's man. Really, it's a very interesting. Every episode. Although leads some to of the more things I just see in there, like, hmm, yeah. I probably wouldn't do it like that. Yeah, His he name- wasn't Oz. He was a dude in the uh the wheelchair, wasn't he? Yep. Got in the wheelchair in Oz. I think that was him. Yeah, he was Michael Dawson in Lost. That's right. And he had his Sometimes he had his he always, and this basically is like Lost to me. Mm. I but never like saw a Lost. Version version of that. That. I never watched Oz. I, I actually wanted to double back on uh, on Lost because I want to say that, damn, it might have been him. Was he the one who said that it was like super racist on set? I think I he was just, remember. I think Harold was just in the news saying uh, the Lost set was like crazy racist. And it was oh, like really? I do remember something about that, but I don't know who it was. I don't remember yeah. who it was. I thought it was somebody else. I'm 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 down. This looks good as hell, bro. That's Boyd it. Stevens. And yeah. I'm so I'm now I'm over here like because I'm watching that yeah. and I'm watching Silo at the same time on Apple TV Plus. So I'm over here like, oh, too many, too many like fictitious worlds. It's too just, many shows. Too much. <laughs> Way I, too I, many. I realize I need to probably just finish one and then start the other. Okay, it was him. He said Lost was racist, which sucks because he was probably one of the only like, black characters. Mm-hmm. It was it wasn't that many, yeah. Lost was fire, but I mean, after a few seasons, I was just like, I couldn't, I happened? couldn't do it anymore, and I just hope that doesn't happen with From, because it just got so confusing. I just stopped watching Lost. I don't even know how it ended. I don't know yeah. if they ever got off that freaking island. I just, I couldn't. What, keep watching. They started doing flash forwards to when they were off the island, and then I was yeah, just like, oh well, spoiler. <laughs> this person lives, I guess. I couldn't. Um, I couldn't do it. So speaking of TV shows, there's a crazy story in the news. Like Squid Games is getting like a whole bunch of uh, promo right now because mm-hmm. they they showed that Netflix made 900 million, almost a billion dollars from it. But the writer, the South Korean writer and director Hwang Dong Hyuk, uh, it made him famous but not rich. He gets no intellectual property rights. And received no residuals. So everybody's kind of like talking about this right now, which does suck. But I think that that's how all Netflix shit is. You know, I I feel like that's how it all is. It's just a big deal because this was so popular. But I don't know. I I think think some of the show. No, I don't think all the shows are like that. Like, for example, you take Dave Chappelle you take Chris Rock's like comedy special. I think it's what was negotiated, and I think he probably got like a really baseline deal mm-hmm. that because of, they didn't know it was gonna be popular. They just was like, right. "We gonna put this on here." <laughs> like, Shonda Rhimes, I'm pretty sure. I'm 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 sure Shonda Rhimes gets something for Bridgerton and all that. Well, but the difference is because she was well known, she already has hit shows under her belt when she came to Netflix. So that's she can negotiate a different like a higher deal, 
right? But I don't know if this guy, he wasn't known internationally. No. I, I don't know how well he was known in Korea, but even if he was one of the most well-known writers and directors in Korea, Netflix was still taking a gamble on him. So they probably didn't negotiate a really good deal with him. Mm. And he probably just accepted it. So unfortunately, that's what happened to him. He just didn't get, it just happened to be a big hit. But at least for the second season, he should be getting something. Hopefully they, yeah. they didn't screw him out of that. Damn. Speaking of, come on, guys, this. so you know Netflix is coming out with like a game show, the Squid Games. I did hear that. Yeah. So me and my friends is gonna audition and be on it because we love the Squid. They Games. killing people? No. Yeah. Really, really. Bad. That's what Squid. That's what Squid Games is. No, so I don't it, understand how you people. could. It's like games. You get eliminated, but you don't die. Mm. Obviously, but they have that food. already. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, like the the type of games, I guess they're like higher stakes. Anyway. Let's start killing contestants. I think that would actually cause. A <laughs> nice Remember movie. they they had that story out that went nowhere. There was like a uh, guy creates a VR game that actually kills you when you die in the game. Mm-hmm. This is like who the fuck would really buy this, right? Like, <laughs> and it was like it was like a headset that did something to your brain, right? Yeah, like something that actually went in your head. Oh, that wasn't just, a joke. It was I a. I, I did. A, I did a video like on it. It was. Um. He. He actually made it, but it wasn't for mass production. So it wasn't like a. A dumb idea that failed. I think he just did it, but that. That's usually the first step in the craziness. Is somebody just doing it? So I don't yeah, really know well, why. I mean, they would get sued so fast by white and black parents. They listen. It's. It's not gonna. It'll never work. Even with waivers behind and all of that, it's never going to work. What type of game would you guys risk playing if if you knew that you could die in the game? Is there any game that you could even think of that would make that risk worth it? Wait, wait, wait. I don't understand what you're saying. So you play the game and then you die in the game. You die in real life. It does something. The headset does something to your brain or or, or something. And now you're a you. vegetable. No, you're just dead. Yeah, I think it inserted. Wait, something did, like but did anyone try this? Do they know that this is true? It's it was it was built. It wasn't made for people. I'm gonna look it up right now. VR, but it wasn't right. made for people. It wasn't made to like mass produce. Okay, so this was ironically this was the Oculus co-fact, co-founder. So this was the one who actually made the 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 most popular VR headset, and it says he made a VR headset that can literally kill you. It's 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 an actual prototype. It says the idea uh, that dying in a video game or simulation could cause your death in real life. It's a common trope that has appeared in dozens of fictional works. Uh, but um, this is a new VR headset that he has designed that has that uses three embedded explosive charges. Okay, planted above the forehead that can instantly destroy the brain of the user. Uh, the lethal explosion is triggered via a narrow band photo sensor that can detect when the screen flashes red at a specific frequency. <gasps> which is easy to set off during a game over screen. So to be clear, uh, it says the deadly headset um, at this point is just a piece of office art, uh, a thought provoking reminder of unexplored avenues in game design. That's scary. That is very scary. Why would anyone like, right. why why would up with that? Cause somebody like, Haha, I'm going to try this. Let's see if it works. Which is, the, which is why this is it. That's why it scares me. Cause it's a serious idea. And obviously building stuff like this, make it needs funding so Mm -hmm. someone is interested in this and they also write the idea of your real life uh, of tying your real life to your virtual avatar has always fascinated us you instantly raise the stakes to the maximum level and force people to fundamentally rethink how they interact with the virtual world and the players inside it absolutely not i i feel like playing video games especially like that's why grand theft auto was so famous like you can literally run outside punch an old lady shoot at the cops and then it's like you get killed and you're like, ah, OK, like, let's restart. Right. right. If that's that you over here trying to make virtual reality reality, I am only there because it's not real. Right. It's virtual. <laughs> right. Now you're trying to make it my real life. Oh, my gosh. Do I have to go to work every day as well in there? Because if so, I'm not. <laughs> going. I don't want to be that, there. That, then you literally become ready player one. That's, that's right. basically what oh it is. So. Well, then they need to connect the money to the, the a real bank account, which I hear right. that there is a game that uh, the new Grand Theft Auto was rumored to be like that. When you make money in there, it can transfer to real life. Um, that, that's been like a 
like a floating headline. You know, there's a bunch of rumors around Grand Theft Auto. But if anywhere, I think that would happen first because it's already happening. There's like a shooter that's kind of like Call of Duty that you can earn real life money in. I think it's uh, it's part of the crypto wave. Yeah. So that interests me. <laughs> I don't know about I don't know about me potentially dying, but that's yes. I can see where it's going. I can see where this is headed, but hopefully not in our lifetime or the next like five, ten lifetimes. So you never know, man. I mean, listen, we're living in, in crazy times. You you can have a full conversation with somebody face to face on the phone right now. You don't have to go to the grocery store to go get your your groceries. You can you can deal with Hello Fresh. Okay, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You get to skip the trials of the of the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And let's be honest, it's summertime. Okay. You make your home the hangout place this summer with crowd-pleasing eats from a back backyard bratwurst bar to a tangy key lime pie. Hello Fresh Market makes summer entertaining a cinch. All right. It's peak time for summer produce and Hello Fresh. Make sure that you get all the best picks all season long. The ingredients travel from the farm to your door in less than seven days for quality that you can actually taste. All right. And if you're looking to eat well this summer, Hello Fresh's menu features calorie smart and protein smart lunches and dinner options, plus new vegan dinners to choose from. Hello Fresh makes it easy to reach your food goals with flavorful recipes that leave you feeling satisfied. And that's what we all want after we eat something. So listen, we've been doing Hello Fresh for a while now, y'all. Y'all already know what it is. It's some good eating. All right. If you don't feel like going to the grocery store, you want it to come right to your front door. That's what you need to do. Get on this Hello Fresh, man. You get to pick your, your delivery day. You get to pick what foods you want, what recipes you want. You need to swap out, swap out some of the proteins. It doesn't get any easier or any better than this. So go to HelloFresh.com slash DIYS50 and use the code DIYS50 for 50% off plus free shipping. Again, go to HelloFresh.com slash DIYS50 and use the code DIYS50 for 50% off plus free shipping. All right? HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Man, come on. Come on. Hello, Fresh. I got a I got a, a crazy story. Um, any of y'all have any plans to be a uh jump on Twitch or be a streamer? No. Not right. Not, Not in your cards. Well, maybe I can change your mind, even though this is low-key kind of creepy. All right, so okay. there is a Twitch streamer. Her name is Amaranth, Amaranth, something like that. So she estimated that she makes more than about $10,000 every night because she streams herself sleeping. So we always talk about making money in our sleep. She literally took it literal. So it says Twitch influencer Amaranth, or however you say it, they recently told the Ice Coffee Hour podcast, that her most lucrative stream is her sleeping. She says that each sleep stream generates about $9,940 with additional revenue revenue coming from conversions to her OnlyFans account. So there's two wildly crazy things about this. First of all, 10K at night. That's crazy just to see you sleep. It's insane. But it's like, I'm trying to think of like, is that it, is that she might be more naked or in lingerie? Like I th- she's probably <laughs> sleeping with the covers and her hair in a bonnet. Like she's just asleep. And yeah, who, I don't know if you can purposely. I don't think it's a sexiness too. I think she's just asleep to hear. Oh. But there might be a sexy a- aspect to it because well, I think some saying, people think that's sexy to creep on somebody and watch them as they sleep. No, yeah. it's definitely a lot of that, which I think is the biggest problem. Is like, okay, who who's my fan base? Who's really like all these people who like watching me? It's sleep? somebody with a knife just rubbing against the skin wire. That's just because what if she be what if she fart in her sleep or something or like That's something? They waiting on. I think they waiting on to see like she farts or she she drools like that's a turn on. Well, I mean, she says that there's a lot of uh, additional revenue coming from conversions to their own, her OnlyFans. So 
I think there is definitely like a sexiness part of it. Um, but she says her monthly income from this is about $2 million. So wait, what is the point of having an OnlyFans if you have a Twitch? Don't they do like, isn't she, I mean, she, the same she, things on both? I mean, no, I mean, OnlyFans is in right now. There are people who do a, a, a numerous amount of things, but the implication mm -hmm. is that you're going to either see a little more or get a little more um, in the, you know, in the sexiness area uh, wow. from the OnlyFans, which it seems like that would be an easy, a easy transfer from this because, you know, there's, I think the biggest model right now is like half online, half on OnlyFans. So if you think Ooh. of like the Adam 22 and Lena plug talk podcast, it's like the, the first porn podcast, they do a, a podcast with a porn star and that's what's, that's what you air as a, on Spotify and then they literally like smash the porn star and that part is on OnlyFans. So the <laughs> okay. half and half thing is pretty big now. And so I'm, I'm assuming maybe she sleeps for the 10K and then does a little a little mo for, for the extra. But 10,000, she says, if she says that about 10,000 a night, every time she goes to sleep, if she streams every night, 30 days, 10K each, that's that's about I mean that's over two million, ain't it? That's three million. I'm just wondering what she has to do. If she, if it's literally she's just asleep, I guess I wouldn't mind doing that if it was like I would, I would, I would do it. Why not? I mean, but here's the other part. Like, I don't I usually don't wear nothing when I sleep, okay? I like to be just free. So I would that's have to like sleep version. with a shirt. I'd that's have to the sleep. OF. I would have to sleep with clothes on just in case. I don't want anybody to see nothing. Like, well, that's the thing. Me. She's doing it on Twitch, so she has to do that anyway. She can't right. do that on Twitch. So she goes to sleep <laughs> and she uh, cuts it out for an hour. The hour that she cuts it out is the sexy, sleepy time sex. And somebody comes in and like pulls the pants shorts down, and then they get it in. And he pulls it back up, and he walks away. That's what the only fan is. <laughs> it's, a, a <laughs> <laughs> it's the sleepy ass pornography. <laughs> yeah. That's that kind of stuff is like that's a. It's an interesting question because the watch people watching you sleep automatically creepy, mm -hmm. but that price tag attached to it. Man, here's the thing though: you got to keep that up. Now the sleeping part, if it was just a sleeping part, that's cool. Yeah. Ten thousand dollars a night, thirty days in a month, that's three hundred thousand dollars. That's not bad. That's not that's not a bad monthly takeaway, right? But once you start doing OnlyFans and fucking like you gotta keep that up. Like OnlyFans sounds cool for a second. And if you love fucking as much as you know, I guess some people do, like yeah, I guess it ain't a problem, but like, you know, I've feel myself fucking before and it's cool, you know, but setting up the camera and a tripod and lights every time. <laughs> Every time you use lights, every I mean, I mean, it depends. It depends. You light sometimes it? I just use a <laughs> light. Sometimes I just, use, sometimes I just use a light on the uh on the phone. Oh, yeah. But if I want to get a specific shot, then yeah, I need I need it to be bright uh -huh. because I want my like want my hands. Thing of lights is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> nah, using a C stand in the bedroom is hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. With but, you know what, but I feel like if it's just one angle of you sleeping, then is it really that bad? I feel like you gotta. I would practice though. I would have to, like tonight. I'm gonna practice sleep, and I'm gonna see what I'm practice. Gonna sleep? I'm gonna practice. Yeah, like, you film yourself. Yeah, and then, and then like I'm go back and look at it. Like, I need to like practice sleeping. Like, let me see what I look like when I wake up in the morning. Because and I see this footage. Because what if I'm an ugly sleeper? Like, what if I'm like. And yeah, then I all this drool is just dripping out on more my money. face and my pillow. I wish I could get paid for people to see me with my CPAP mask on. Yo, you would get so much money with your CPAP device. That would be dope. You could play like Star Wars nobody music. Doing that to hear nobody is doing that on. Be like bum 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 oh, bum, oh, bum, oh. bum bum bum. And then you can play oh. a game on there, and like you can <sighs> like you know, like hey, who think that to hears. Uh, that's what it looks like. This is my new out. CPAP. This is my travel one. This is the that one look I like use. Alexa. That's, that's the one I use when I'm on the plane. <laughs> so plug. This is the hose right here. Okay, you got your hookah in place. That's your hookah. That ain't CPAP. Okay, please. <laughs> use that. My mask is on my 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 stationary one, but I put your the mask, mask is just on. Like this? What? Yeah, it covers the whole face right here. Nose, nose, and mouth. <laughs> and I just lean back, put my hood on. I'll be in that motherfucking knockout. 
and With I can sleep hood? confidently on a plane because I got to wear. Wait, you do it? That's the one you use on the plane? Yeah, well, on the plane and in the hotels. This is my travel one, so I plug it up and then plug that part up into the CPAP, and then you it don't have no room. water in it. I, you don't have so the humidifier part is like for mouth breathers. So when they're breathing through their mouth, they don't wake up with the dry mouth. But mm -hmm. I breathe through my nose most of the times unless my nose is stopped up. So I don't, I don't, you don't have to have a humidifier on your thing. Mm. <coughs> you do on the nights that your nose is stopped up. You still use That's it? That's why I have a full face mask. Then I use, I breathe through my mouth. Oh. So the full okay. face mask is for people who, you know, know that their nose might get stopped up and all that type of stuff. So. Mm. That, okay. That would probably. Now that, that I would. Now I would. I would get on there sometimes to see. Okay, we're taking bets every night to see what time to hear his face mask is going to shift to the side, and he. Because <laughs> what happens is the one, the stationary one. Um, what happens is is it's constantly pu pushing air, right? That's what it stands for: continuous positive air pressure. Um, it's constantly pushing air, but like when you stop, like basically what happens with me, my my the muscles in my tongue relax and it blocks my airway. And so that is my body like shaking, like, hey, breathe, nigga. Oh my and god. So to keep you from doing that, when the air pressure is blowing and your tongue like falls back or blocks it, it increases the pressure yeah. before you do that to keep you from interrupting your sleep. Because when uh, you do that, you basically like try to jump start your body to wake up. But the air pressure comes, hits the tongue, the tongue moves, air, air flow is able to go down, and then you can keep your flow. So it's pumping down. air in. Huh? It's pumping air in, and which makes you breathe in? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you are you on the CPAP Facebook group that Joe Biden's in? Why is Joe Biden in a, a Facebook group about CPAP? It's a, it's a joke. He's He's got oh. a CPAP machine too, Pat. <laughs> he does? Yes, that was in the news. You ain't looking at your internet, okay? I don't he know anything about Joe machine. Biden. <clears throat> and I was like, why y'all over here talking about Joe Biden, his CPAP machine? Like, let he is like a billion years old. Let that man right. live. I don't, I don't really know anything about politics like that. I just know that, that ain't about politics is about a CPAP. No, I mean, I just don't be following Joe Biden because it seems like this season of like our president on the shade room. Pat? It seemed like this season of our president. This nigga said it seemed like this season. I mean, Obama was a great season. Trump was at least exciting. Biden is just it's boring. It's a it's slow. <laughs> <laughs> America is slow right now. You know, it's, it's not slow. slow. He's old. He just oh, he be falling. He be forgetting stuff. But Obama and Trump are in the headlines doing interesting things. Biden just be in the headlines falling. <laughs> Falling asleep, trying to shake hands with Living the wrong the hand. Stage, just like, oh, the core tripped me. <laughs> there no core right there, man. Uh, we got how I, walking worked. I just, I just, I just think he's 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 kind of lackluster with the after the buildup of it was Bush, then Obama, then Trump, and then it's like Biden. Like it's like a, yeah. it's like a. I feel like we're in our filler episodes right now. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I understand why they always want older guys to run for president. Like they want you to, you know, they have these requirements. Uh, but like you know, typically this is fifty five to sixty five and older that be running mm -hmm. for president. It'd be like, man, we ain't gonna never get no fresh ideas. With these right, old they don't even let old people that. drive. How you gonna let them run the country? Like, now, I will say this: as, tr as old as Trump was, he knew how to hop on Twitter. He was big on Twitter. He was doing his mm -hmm. thing. Obama too. Like Joe Biden, ain't no nobody believes that Joe Biden is actually tweeting. Like we knew Trump was tweeting. We're like this motherfucker, wow. <laughs> he was somebody shit and everything. He upset. He wow. Joe Biden was like, yeah, went on a nice bike ride today. It's a beautiful day in America. Shut your old ass up. Somebody pushed you around that White House in that. <laughs> In that wheelchair, sir, with your jitterbug on your hip. <laughs> it just they it, on my yeah. ass right now. These niggas said MTM said I have a I have essential food oils, like <laughs> KFC oils, Big Mac oils. <laughs> Yo, that is hilarious. See, bro. See, boil oils, you niggas is you, you niggas is trash. <laughs> <laughs> you said a seafood boil. Uh said the only essential oil I need is whatever they fry the chicken in. That's what exactly. you be saying. To here uses essential flavored food flavored oils. 
KFC oils in your CPAP is not okay. <laughs> MTM, that is not okay. <laughs> Big Mac oil. Wow. <laughs> Big <That> Mac is... <laughs> oils. <laughs> That's why you like that CPAP machine so much. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I do agree, though. Joe, if you 60 or 70, that means you grew up so long ago. That yeah. you're, you're all of the principles that you were like, when I'm president, I'm going to change this. It changed already. So <laughs> it's is like it, you're giving an old ass. I'm going to change civil idea. rights and make them. Yeah, right, what his promises was to do rid of colored water fountains. Like, nigga, <laughs> it's like, nigga, when did you start? Your you can't stop being part of your campaign. <laughs> this nigga's just now working on COVID plans. <laughs> He's like, we're gonna end this pandemic, damn it. It's like no, no, man. they not my friends, man. Think it's <laughs> dirty. Lemon pepper hot with the sea. <laughs> to hear that's what you I knew that's what you had in your CPAP machine. I don't know why they don't do that though, because if it's like pumping air into mm-hmm. your face all day it might as well smell like lavender yeah, i'm glad they don't i would my fat ass will find a way to gain weight while i sleep if I... <laughs> no not food definitely not big mac but like no, lavender I, know, but just or the oil. I don't know how you gonna eat the oil yeah and then you got high blood, blood pressure I'm, I'm, like, I'm like man <laughs> that big mac oil man I, I think I gotta cut out red meat man i'm cutting out red meat i cut out soda and I, I cut out the vape pen and I think Good. I had to cut out dairy. I had another flare up last Monday. Of uh, asthma? I have a lightest, bro. I made it through the whole day. My stomach was hurting when I got back from Austin, Texas, but I thought it was because I had a smoke sack burger from a <laughs> from my Shake Shack, right? The little peppers, the little cherry I love peppers. That one. Yeah, oh, those are good. They're fire, right? And I know I was like, I'm gonna pay for it on the way out, but going in, this shit is good, right? My stomach was hurting all Saturday. Sunday was hurting a little bit. Monday was hurting, but I was like, all right, I'm good. I should be good, right? Bro, I went, got in a jacuzzi Monday afternoon, got out of the jacuzzi, came back in the house, sat down to eat, and I was like, this shit don't feel right. Went upstairs mm-hmm. to the toilet, and on the toilet, the shit just, like, it happened. Like, it happened so fast. It's like, it's like violent. Like, boom, now it feels like somebody's ripping the intestines, right? I Dang. fall off the toilet. <laughs> I'm on the ground, right? Because the shit hurts that bad. I get on the Kaiser app. Uh, I make a um, a virtual appointment with the doctor. I'm <laughs> like, I don't know what he gonna see because I just I gotta do this. So oh, you he still on the call instead of doing a video thing? He called, so I was able to get him to refill the medicine that I needed, and then Farron okay. really got it. But Farron okay. came back from getting the medicine because she had to go. At this time, it's like eleven. She had to go to the one that was on Sunset. But she came back with the medicine. I was in the same spot. On the ground, I could not. Oh, yeah. That shit is debilitating, bro. That medicine helped right away, though. Yeah, by the next day, I was back to like forty percent, forty fifty percent. And then I have to take it. I have to take two antibiotics, and then they gave you something <laughs> for the pain. Uh, but yeah, one for inflammatory, and then one for any infection that might have been caused. So here I am thinking it's just my stomach hurt, but it was probably just the, the onset of the diverticulitis so i had been dealing with it for two two days thankfully nothing happened while i was on the road because they never give me enough oh, medication God. to like like have some left over they only give you enough for what you have to take for that one and they don't give you any refills oh, they damn. want you to go back to the hospital every time so they could do like the the, the the die and make sure that is what it is before they issue the medicine but i'm like nigga i can't walk it is what it is. Right. Give it the script. <laughs> what do you what did they tell you you have to change here? I think Man, at first when it. I first got diagnosed with it, they were saying that, you know, stay away from grains and nuts and small seedy foods like that. Mm-hmm. Uh and then something came out last year that was like, nah, we kind of can't confirm that. We don't know. We we honestly what? don't know. But they said it get, it could be made worse by red meat, dairy. Uh, and it was something else. So I was just like, all right, well, fuck it. I'm just going to cut that out and see what happens. So I'm just doing chicken, basically a pescatarian diet. Um, oh, so no chicken. Yeah, I might cut out chicken for a while, too. 
Yeah, and if you do eat meat, you need to get it like organic, like pasture like it needs to be the top of the line meat. Don't get just stuff you can get easily off the grocery. Wait, you saying Shake Shack don't got top of the line shit? No. The nuggets at Shake Shack. Shake Shack nuggets is so trash, bro. Nuggets. Nuggets? They got they got their nuggets is trash. Okay, here's the nugget. Fuck Shake Shack. I'm tired of these, I'm tired of these businesses that have you come in and they want you to place your order on this fucking screen thing, right? You want me to place my order here? It took longer for me placing my order here than it would have gone to the lady, but fine, fuck it, right? It's a new system. It's lacking every time I try to make any type of adjustment, like at the circle of death, right? It took me eight minutes from start to finish to place my order, right? Then when I get my order, my shit is wrong, right? But on top of that, it's like, Y'all ask me if I want a tip. Who 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 I'm tipping? Who's tip? Oh, I guess the person who's heating it up. <laughs> that's no. that's his job. Why yeah. am I tipping for him? You tip when something is so amazing, like at the end of a bill when you're yeah. at a restaurant, or you tip when something was made such a pleasurable experience. You're like, I enjoyed myself so much in this small interaction. Let me little little something, something, something. If I'm taking my own order. On a machine, who am I tipping? What are y'all doing? You should, yourself. you should get a discount. Man. I mean, that's better than when they flip the screen and they're and then they look this way. <laughs> and it's a tip. And it's just like, you just took my the order of my sandwich. <laughs> and they're just like, all right, and just a signature right there. <laughs> like, you know, one of these like they right can't here. tell when they <laughs> flip it back around if you paid a tip or not. Like, right. I'm not gonna know. Like that's that's so weird to me because it's just like man, this the interaction was not typical, but the how they do it is just so awkward that sometimes you just be like, man, all right, five. And five. I honestly don't believe that these businesses be giving all the tips straight to them. I feel like just like at a strip club where the strippers make a little money, the business take 20, 30 percent, right? So mm-hmm. I feel like they still like, oh man, you guys made five hundred dollars of tips, but it's really seven hundred dollars because these sneaky motherfuckers that took some. Yeah. I just don't trust these businesses, bro. No. If y'all gonna put the pressure on me to tip like that instead of just paying y'all employees, I don't trust you, bro. That does it. I mean, yeah, that that is true. I always hope they at least split it with each other, mm-hmm. like the the workers. But that, that's trash too, because you can have somebody who's way better at their job than somebody else. And, yeah, that's when they more deserving of it. Yeah, some people don't like that. That's where they rather get tipped like individually. When I worked right. at a restaurant, that's how it was. Like some people, you you would get tipped individually, but then they would have some, certain. You had the option as a waiter to like pull your tips with somebody, so you guys would help each other's table, and then at the end of the night you would split whatever you got. But the only people that would do that were like the exceptional. They like, I only want another exceptional waiter for good right. reason. Yeah. Right? You know, so you wouldn't get stuck holding all the Oh, things. so sometimes pooling tips isn't the whole staff. It's just who like the, the two or three people that work one yeah, table. So, sometimes it, every restaurant's different, but like where I work, they, they give that you the options. Sense. Some other places, like if you if you ever sit down at a restaurant and you want to know if they're pooling, just see who's serving you. If anybody's willing to help you, that means they're pulling the tips for the night. Ooh. If you have one specific waiter, waitress, yeah. usually they're not pooling. But sometimes there'll be like someone who's a waiter, not your waiter, but they'll come up and like maybe ask if you want like a refill or something or like that usually means they're most times that means that they're pulling the tips. They're okay with like helping each other. But if you like ever had to like, hey, can you go get my waiter? Or you know, it seems like they don't really want to help you. It's because they have their own tables and they're like, I'm not getting nothing off of this. Right. <laughs> that makes sense. I've never worked at a restaurant. I've never I've never been a waiter before. So that's that, that seems like a whole I like how they they take up for each other though because it seems like uh the the nicest people I've ever seen at a restaurant in terms of like on the customer side had experience in the food service you know yeah. so they they like you know they're just like really really good to each other yeah yeah like I'm a really good tipper because I worked in a restaurant so like to me my standard tip is 20% if you just yeah. did your job. Now, if you go above and beyond, I may consider giving you more. If you do less than what I expected, then I'll give you 10%. If you're just horrible, I'm leaving it blank and I'm leaving an explanation why I'm leaving it blank. Damn. What's your That's explanation? 
Like you, you know, you completely miss the ball. You mess up my order multiple times. But like, I'll write, I'll flip that receipt over and I will write on there. Damn, the extra. They ain't gonna be playing no games. But that's because I used to work in an environment, so I understand. What like, if it's busy? That, again, that's why my standard is 20%. So if you do your job, you don't do anything extra, you get 20% from me. Now, if you do, like I said, you, you're not, you didn't, it was busy, it was off your kilter, then I'll give you 10. But at least I still give you a tip. Yeah. But now, like I said, if you're terrible, you're just horrible. It doesn't matter if it's busy because every restaurant is busy every dinner time, right? That's just the nature of the business. You don't know how to work in this environment that you don't need to be in there as a waiter or waitress. That's true. They, like, yeah, wait, yeah. Former waiters, they have the highest standards when it comes to the food industry. They be like, no, nah, I would have never did this like this. <laughs> Why am I just now getting my drink and I've had my salad for five minutes? Right, oh. and, I, and I be noticing that because, I, like I said, I work in a restaurant, so I look around and I can tell, like, okay, this is your section. I see how many people are working. Oh, they don't have enough waiters tonight. I see what's going on. Like, it's very easy to tell, but if I just see y'all standing around and I can tell if you're a lazy waiter or not if you're just gonna be lazy okay cool you know what yeah. all right i got you say less say less yeah well listen you. man it's about that time for us to get up out of here man we appreciate you pulling up on us and hanging out with us it was Thank good you. to see your face you want to let the people right. know what you got going on anything coming up that you want them to look out for yeah so you catch me on my twitch sleeping what's up uh, make, sleep. Make, scoop, make sleep make <laughs> um no you can hit Check me out on all of my social media, including Spill. Thanks to here. Hey, you know, see what I'm scooping up. I would love to hear from you. Check me yes, out. Sir, all, all on Spill. <laughs> we on there now. We on there. We about to take over. It's in the game, we that. But listen, man, um, as always, we appreciate the Scary Squad. I'm on my pulling up, man. Thank you for everyone that's watching, even if you're watching this on Thursday. Thank you for tuning in, tapping in. I hope you had a good ride or a good drive while you were listening to this and you're watching. I hope you enjoyed it. It's always good to link up with our sister, man. Can't wait to mm -hmm. see her in person again. We'll do a couple episodes of this podcast in person. As always, ladies and gentlemen, I'm to hear more. I'm Patrick Clapp. We'll see you next time on the next episode of Damn Internet. You scary. Peace, guys. Curry. <laughs>